Well, good evening, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today we're looking at a beer that I've actually passed before. I've passed it up thinking it was another brewery. And it wasn't really... That, if, if I took the time to look at it, I would have known it wasn't that other brewery. But it was just the color schemes and the art and everything just quickly, and I'm legally blind, so I'm just walking. I'm like, yeah, that's something else. Anyway, we're looking at, from New Ontario Brewing, Bear Runner Blondale. Anyone see what that kind of reminds them of, or at least what it would remind me of? The entire can art. It reminded me of Collingwood. Um, I don't remember which one is in the white can for Collingwood. I think it's their ESB. But the artwork is not exactly the same, but fairly similar. Um, in this world that we're in right now with lawsuits and everything, I'm surprised nobody said anything because the color schemes are close to the same, the text is close to the same. Anyway, so this is uh, New Ontario Brewing in North Bay, Ontario. Uh, it says on here, uh, contains water, malted barley, malted wheat, hops, and yeast, imported from Northern Ontario. Imported from Northern Ontario. North Bay isn't that far north, and uh, we're still here in Ontario. Named for the little little known and completely fictional annual North Bay running of the bears, this blonde ale is a crowd-pleasing golden beer that showcases fresh Canadian prairie malts with a pleasant light hop profile. It pairs well with sitting around the campfire and good times with good friends. 4.5% alcohol served at 5 degrees Celsius, I can tell you it's not at that. You don't have to run faster than the bear, just faster than your friend. That's that's a nice thought. Um, so let's get into this. New Ontario, New Ontario. Didn't New Ontario have an ale and a lager? Oh, that's uh, that was bent off to the s was bent off to the side. I was trying to open. Yeah, okay. Let's hope we can still get into this now. Um. Wasn't New Ontario the one that came out with the uh, the hundred mile ale and hundred mile lager? I'm just trying to uh, the the black can with the green writing and all that because there was a there was a brewery that it was a contract brewery and it had Ontario in its name and it was it was connected in some way with Michael Duggan, uh, Michael Duggan from uh, Duggan's Brew Pub and uh, he. he My kids broke my bottle brush. I thought I fixed it this time. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that a lot of the last reviews I haven't had my same cup problem I've been having. Because I've been using the bottle brush and everything else and I have it drying properly. This time I didn't have the bottle brush so I was just using the cloth and everything. Everything was clean but I didn't get all the hard water out apparently. <laughs> like I have been able to do. Ah, I'm sad. I gotta buy another bottle brush. I gotta buy another bottle brush anyway because they found the bottle brush for the new baby. So I gotta go to the dollar store and buy two bottle brushes. Uh, they also found some of the formula we had in case, in case the wife can't produce. And I gotta find out where that is because it's not where I put it. This is why I don't like the kids coming downstairs without me. It's a nice color. Kind of brassy, a little, little orange. Very, very hazy. A little bit of bright white head up at the top. Tiny bit of snap, crackle, pop scent. Not much. Oh, a little more. A little bit of pear. A little bit of pear, a little bit of greeniness out of the can. Let's try it. Cheers. Okay. A little forefront malt sweetness. And then a nondescript uh, graininess, a grainy kind of biscuitiness that goes from the uh, right from the middle, well, right from the beginning, right down to the to the end, not to the final final end, but to the end. Um, a little touch of a berry note and a pear note, and then a touch of of like uh, grapefruit rind. All in all, that's not a bad blonde ale. 
light bodied, easy drinking. This is not being served cold. This is being served at basement temperature, so I don't know what it is down here today. I'm going to guess around 12 to 14. Because I actually have shorts on today instead of naked. Or underwear. I actually have two layers on on my below half. Yeah, that's uh, it's a blonde ale. It's a somewhat boring beer, but it is exactly what you'd expect from the style of beer it is. Is it a bad beer? Not at all. Not at all. Um, that that grapefruit rind flavor a little too much on the back palate. My wife came down to watch a movie with me and she fell asleep. That's what the snoring is. I tried to wake her up and bring her upstairs, and she was like, "I'm just trying to get the energy to go upstairs," and then she fell asleep again. And then I accidentally woke her up a second time when a chair fell over. And I got the same answer, and then she fell asleep again. So I'm like, you know what? We'll just have to deal with the snoring if you guys hear it. I don't know. It is It is what it is. It's It's—it's a beer. It's a blonde ale. There's the hundreds of blonde ales in the province. It doesn't stand out above other blonde ales. But if you like blonde ales... It's for you. If you're in the North Bay area, though, that's that's where these type of beers... See, this is the thing with Ontario and distribution and everything else. These type of beers are great for the locale that the beer is from. You're in North Bay, and you want a blonde ale? Great, drink the local blonde ale, because it's not much different than any other blonde ale around the province. You're in uh, Van Cleek Hill? Drink Bose. You're in... Uh, you're in Perth, drink uh, the Perth Brewing Companies. You're in Kingston, drink Gannon Aukways. You know, or uh, Stone Cities, or a anything like that. You're in, uh, you're in Toronto, there's a lot of them. You're in, uh, uh, you're in Niagara Falls, I don't know, Enlightenment from, uh, or is it Hail Mary? I think it's Hail Mary from, uh, or is it Enlightenment? I can't remember which one is their blonde. Uh, Brimstones uh, over in, uh, in in Ridgeway, or if you're in Niagara Falls, you can do something from Niagara Brewing or Niagara College, or you, you know that's the greatest thing about the hundreds of them in the provinces. You can get a blonde ale almost anywhere you go, and it's going to be local. That's the great thing. The bad thing is they just fill up the skews at the LCBO. The LCBO only has so much shelf space and only so much SKU space and only so much storage space for their their online uh, warehouse. And when you figure that there's just so many Blondales there, it just, it gets somewhat, well, Blondales and Pilsners and everything else, like, the Blonde Loggers and Pilsners and everything else like that, it just gets, it gets overwhelming, and it is what it is, but it gets overwhelming fast. Is it a bad beer? No, not a bad beer at all. Is it a beer that stands out in any way? No, not really at all. Is it a beer I could drink again? Yes, certainly I could. There's nothing wrong with the beer. There's no faults in the beer. There's nothing like that. It's just a beer. It's just a beer. And that can work. And that can work really well. And kudos to you guys for making a blonde ale, which can't hide a lot of flaws. It has absolutely nothing. But it's just... It's going to be a 6 out of 10, because it's good. It's drinkable, and that's that's all I can say about it. Cheers, guys.